Okay, I figured today I'm going to shoot a little video to demonstrate isolation transformers and how they work and kind of try to explain it in a, in a simple um, form for people to understand. I'm going to call this one Isolation Transformers for Dummies and Why You Need One. I'm going to try a little experiment this evening to show how an isolation transformer isolates you from electric shock if you accidentally make contact with one of the terminals from it and you are in contact with ground. So what we have here is we've driven a screwdriver. This is a one foot long screwdriver and it's just driven into the soil. And I've got a ground wire, I've got a wire attached to it, which will be my earth ground. Now this is just an extension cord that is plugged directly into mains. It is not on my isolation transformer. If we look at the voltmeter in AC volts, we will see that this is the hot terminal, this is the neutral, and this is the ground. Between hot and neutral, we have 120 volts. Between hot and ground, we have 120 volts. And between hot and the wire I've stuck into the ground, we have 120 volts. Therefore, if I plug my lamp in, between the hot and the neutral, we will have light. If I plug my lamp in between the neutral and ground it, we have no light whatsoever, right? We have no light. If I plug my hot line in and ground the other side, we have light. Maybe not quite as bright as it would be if I plugged it in directly because this is an indirect ground and it's only about a foot long into soil. If I were to drive a six foot ground rod in uh, and use a little heavier wire, then we would have a good ground. If I were to put a jumper wire, for example, between the house ground, which is this terminal here and here, we have full brightness because the house ground is grounded in a big electrode under the house. It's got a ground plate that grounds that and the neutral is tied also to the ground. But my little mediocre test uh, ground is only a ground rod that's driven into the, our screwdriver that's driven into the ground and it's only driven into the ground about, I don't know, eight inches, nine inches. So it's not driven into very good ground either. It's driven into a, it's not driven into soil. It's actually driven into gravel. But uh, as you can see, there is a ground there. Now, I can take the same plug, and we'll plug this one into the isolation transformer. Okay. Now, if I plug the cord in directly, I've got light. Okay. If I plug it in to the hot side, I have nothing. If I plug it into the neutral side, I have nothing. And because the ground is isolated, even if I connect the ground here, I have nothing. If I look at my voltage with my voltmeter between the two terminals, because remember, there is no neutral or ground reference here, I have 120 volts. Okay, 123 volts, okay? But between, okay, same with on this side. This is just induction, right? There's no current here though, right? I could touch these wires together and nothing would happen. I could touch the ground right to this one here and nothing will happen because it's going to pull it to ground. Right, either side of these can be pulled to ground, and that's what I'm stressing. It the isolation transformer, I can stick that in, nothing's going to happen. Stick it into there, nothing's going to happen. Even if I grounded this to the building ground, nothing's going to happen. If I shorted the two of them together, then yes, I'd have sparks because I would complete the circuit. We'll look at a diagram just to show you guys how this works and why it works and why isolation transformers are important to have if you're servicing electronics. So if we draw on our, our distribution, you've got your, your pole. This is feeding your, your, your residence or your property. And you know, if you've got three-phase power, you'll have a, a crossbar at the top of the pole here. 
and it'll have the, the uh, insulators with the three primary lines providing power and you got your pole mounted transformer now a single phase you'd only have one but I've drawn in a, a three phase system but for a single phase tap you're going to have a transformer mounted on the pole and there'll be a, a fuse cut out and there'll be a, a, a wire going into the fuse and then coming from the fuse it'll go down into the transformer the transformer is going to be connected to the secondary wires which will travel up the street like that your neutral is always the top wire and then you've got two live wires line one live one and live two your transformer is connected to the three wires neutral is the center and then you've got your line two and line one there's also the neutral side of the primary which will also come out from the transformer and it's also bonded down to your neutral and your neutral also is bonded down to a ground that goes into the ground at the base of the pole your home is connected now on this on at least in North America I know in Europe is a little different in North America we have 120 volts on each of these two secondary lines out of phase so the neutral is at zero and you've got 120 and you've got 120 so between either of the line water line to a neutral you've got 120 volts between the neutral and either phase between the two phases you've got 240 volts between the two phases and between phase one and neutral you've got 120 in between phase two and neutral you've got 120 volts your plug would be connected I know I'm, I'm not showing the the metering or anything I'm just showing the, the, the plug itself but your your electrical plug you got a large blade small blade and a ground the large blade is a neutral so your neutral would be connected there and one of the lines connected to the other and your ground connected to ground if you were to make contact with a live wire here you are and you touch a live wire it's going to be a very bad day for you because you're going to get a jolt because the current is going to go from line through you to ground. This is where an isolation transformer will protect you when you're servicing equipment. Isolation transformer, you have a primary winding and a secondary winding. Secondary winding goes to your plug. ground is not connected to anything one wire that goes to your your hot side pin on the plug on the prong and then the other one goes to the neutral side your primary winding is obviously going to a plug which is going to be plugged into your conventional plug so you've got line and neutral and on this side here you've just got an output it's essentially a balanced output. You do not have a neutral side. You do not have a hot side. Um, if you were to look at it, you still have 120 volts, but if you tried to measure either side to ground, you would see zero or you just see the induction from the transformer itself. So that's why when we were measuring it, I was getting about 30 volts on one side and about 38 or 39 volts on the other. It's not an accurate reading because there's nothing to reference to ground. Even, you know, I've got my meter connected to ground or connected to neutral on one side but uh, there's there's no reference there's no connection between it now you get some some pretend isolation transformers I guess you could say the the quote isolation transformer that's not really an isolation transformer because what they've done is they've taken the uh, neutral and they've bonded it to 
one side. Well, that effectively removes the isolating effect of the transformer because now this line here is is, 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 is connected to ground because you remember that your neutral over here is grounded as is the ground prong on your outlet. So the neutral is effectively tied to ground at the utility pole and it's also at your, at your house where the service enters your house in your electrical panel the neutral is connected to the ground so there's another ground in your house which provides a secondary ground and in North America and in Canada in BC where I am uh, the utility has to ground every 300 meters even on every pole that there's a transformer there will be a ground but there will also be another ground every 300 meters so the the neutral line is kept at zero at, at ground potential it can fluctuate a little, fluctuate a little bit uh, if you're drawing a lot of uh, load on one side for example this is the return so if the if the if the load is not balanced if you're drawing everything off line one and line two is not being is not having any current flow at all you will see there will be a slight rise in current on or rise in voltages to say on the uh, neutral. The neutral is going to carry the full load. Incidentally, it's 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 at zero volts, but it's carrying the full load. So if you're drawing 15 amps on, say, line two, that entire 15 amps is going to go through this plug or through your appliance. It's going to go out, and it's going to come back this way. So if you're drawing 15 amps through this plug, 15 amps of current will be running through the neutral line, even though the potential is still held to zero by the ground it still will carry current and that's something to be that's 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 also very important because if you're if you're working on circuitry people say oh i'm just working on the neutral and they disconnect the neutral and they don't realize that that neutral may be carrying current from another branch circuit upstream and um, even though the circuit they're working on there's nothing there that neutral could be carrying current from another another circuit upstream and you could have a fair bit of current on that neutral wire so people have been electrocuted working on the neutral assuming that because it's grounded that there's no voltage or no current there well what happens is that's for another discussion but uh, if you've got multiple circuits and you were to break that neutral right so for example if you were to cut that neutral line right there the entire return from that circuit would be present here and you'd end up with lots of voltage there. This is what happens if, if the neutral sometimes breaks at the pole or breaks at the transformer or at the bond, uh, you'll end up with a higher voltage across one of your other other, other sides because um, uh, basically if you've got a, 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 an appliance that's drawing full power on one side and you broke that neutral, the neutral would run to 120 volts and then circuit or appliances or devices running on the other side would see 240 across them if you break the neutral. So anyway, that's going ahead of ourselves. That's time for it. That's that's for a different a different video. But what I'm getting at is with the isolation transformer, you don't want that. You want an isolation transformer that is completely isolated so that your your outlet that you are plugging your test equipment or plugging your device under test into is completely isolated from the line. And that's what I demonstrated here using my isolation transformer. The light did not come on, but it did when I connected it to the hot side and provided a path to ground. So if that's you and you're, you're making contact with ground and you touch the hot side, you're going to become the conductor. On an isolation transformer, you're not because this will float. Now, say if you touch both of them at the same time, yes, you'll complete the circuit. If I were to grab both of these wires, then I would certainly get a shock. But if I only grab one and I'm touching something that's grounded, I'm not going to get a shock. It's the safety device that everyone should have if they are working on vintage electronics, especially hot chassis tube equipment like the five tube radios, for example, or any of the old televisions that need the AC operated televisions because the chassis itself was connected directly to one side. So the chassis, what, you, what you're thinking, the metal chassis you think is grounded, well, in the old days, they did not use a polarized plug. So you could plug the plug in either way. If your chassis is connected, if 
the, if the chassis ground is connected to one side of the line cord, you had a 50-50 chance that that chassis was either connected to neutral or that chassis was connected to the hot side. You had full line voltage on that chassis, the metal chassis that you thought was ground. On the old five tube radios, the only thing that stopped you from getting a shock, and I'm talking the Bakelite or the wooden radios that had the wooden knobs on them or the, the Bakelite uh, plastic knobs, was the actual knob. Uh, I learned this the hard way when I was about, I'm going to say, seven years old maybe. I had an old AM radio, an old Bakelite radio. And uh, I used to listen to radio stations from all over the country on it. And how I re improved my reception is I had a long wire antenna that ran all the way, like ran over the roof from one side of the house to the other, and it came in my window. And I used to take the rate. I used to take the long wire antenna. This radio did not have an external antenna. It had a big coil on the back of the on the back of the the, the, the batch hole, uh, uh, cardboard back had an antenna inside, and I just wound a coil of wire and just stuck it up against the back of the radio, and that was enough to to inductively couple my external antenna and I picked up everything. This old radio, I loved it. It was a great sounding old radio, but it was a Bakelite radio. And what happened on it was one of the knobs got broken. I think it was the, either the tuning knob, I think it was the volume knob actually. So it had a metal shaft sticking out. It had a plastic knob on it and the plastic knob got broken. And one day when I plugged this thing in, I wasn't paying attention because we didn't have polarized plugs at the time. You could plug it in either direction. I remember I had my arm leaning on the uh, aluminum window frame and I touched the volume control on this radio and got walloped with the entire 120 volt line in one hand and out the other. And I, I got the biggest shock that I had ever received and I couldn't figure out why. And I say I was only about seven years old, and my neighbor, that uh, incidentally I think I've told you guys this before, but my neighbor at the time, well, it wasn't my neighbor, uh, but he was in, he was the neighbor. I grew up in the neighborhood that I live in, and the guy just happened to live in the house that is directly across the street from where I live now. He was the TV repairman for the area back in the 1960s and into the 70s. And I used to go and hang out at his place. He was friends of the family, and he would teach me stuff. And when I got, and this is a radio that he'd given me, and I, and he actually, I would, I, he was teaching me how to fix a radio when I was like seven years old. And he'd given me this old radio. And um, anyway, I told him, like, this radio, I got one hell of a shock. And he asked me what I was doing. I said, well, I said, I touched the knob when I was leaning up, I had my hand or rather other arm was on the middle uh, window frame. And I got this one hell of a shock and I was going to throw the radio out. And then he explained to me, well, this is a hot chassis and that's why they had plastic knobs and the plastic knob was broken. So, um, you know, in the end, he helped me make a wooden knob for it so that I wouldn't get a shock. But anyway, that's just a story. Anyway, uh, I just redid this thing because uh, I realized that there was my, well, first my drawing was, was an error, but when I first put the video up, I, I drew it, the neutral line one and line two, and then when I when I drew it down to here, I had actually had, on the original one, I actually had, I think, 240 on the plug, which was an oops. So I just kind of did this to fix up an error that I caught in the video that I didn't catch because I, I uploaded it and uh, didn't watch it first before I clicked the button to make it public. So that's why the duplicate upload, not really a duplicate upload, I just wanted to fix something to, to uh, uh, stop any confusion and uh, also neaten up my drawing a little bit here. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.